Barbara, Bill, welcome. Thank you. It's such a treat to have you all in Australia at the same time. How often do you three get together? Every night for the right. last 45 years. We party <laughs> together and have the great time. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. You're understanding families. We're getting tired of it. each other now, but that was fun. <laughs> Seriously, Barbara, how long since you've seen these boys? Oh. What, three weeks? <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> We're not too, too long ago. The nostalgia actually. must be overwhelming. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, to the opportunity to come to Australia to celebrate I Dream of Jeannie, did that excite you? Very much, yes. Yeah, sure. I haven't been here in 20 years. It's oh. not the same. It's built up tremendously. Was it something we said? No. <laughs> no, it's just so far away, that's all. Oh, you have to make all the lights. <laughs> it's long, but a lovely city. Really Help! <laughs> So um, you, you must have fond memories of I Dream of Jeannie. It was pivotal in all of your careers. Larry, first of all, you, when you, when you saw the script, a little far-fetched, but you thought, I can roll with this. Far-fetched? <laughs> far-fetched, surely you just. No, it was wonderful. And working with Barbara and Bill, too. I mean, you know, it's, I, you don't get a chance like that very often. What did you think of the storyline when you first saw I mean, every boy would love to play an astronaut. I don't think you'd yes. have a problem playing that. But uh -huh. the actual storyline, a genie in a bottle. I thought it was wonderful. And it seemed to work five years. It was only when we got married when they stopped the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was that the jumping the shark moment, as they call it? Now? Yeah, yes. they, they shoved us in with the sharks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Barbara, when you first saw the script and they said, right, this is it. You're going to play a genie in a bottle. I you loved it. I loved it, but I, I asked my agent, I said, do they know what I look like? Because they had been testing every Miss Syria, Miss Greece, Miss Italy, these gorgeous brunettes, and they were beauty queens, long legs, very tall. I said, they know what I look like? <laughs> he said, yes, they're very interested in you. So I was, I was happy. I liked it very much. Now, over the years, I've heard rumors about whether you were allowed to show your belly button, whether you weren't allowed to show your belly button. What was the actual rules at the time? No belly button. <laughs> no None. belly button at all. <laughs> what was so scandalous about the belly button? I don't know. I don't know. I was born. You know, I... <laughs> We've all got one. <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone, we did, we did three shows in Hawaii, and uh, we were on the beach with Don Ho. Every girl in, in back of us... Bikinis. All the, ...had bikinis on. I had a one-piece tank suit. It was ridiculous. I didn't care. I didn't care, but it was silly. Now, the, the wonderful, famous nod and, and blink, and they said, did you come up with that, or...? No, I didn't. I, I didn't. Our director at the time, Jean Nelson, I, I did come up with the nod, but uh, the blinking was Jean. So the workshop and then... It and this is, you know, this is just genies. They do this, don't they? They do, yeah. Can you do it for us now? You just did. Well... Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeannie. Okay. Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone! <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave. <laughs> now, Bill, I've heard whispers that um, you as a you were wearing an army uniform. Yeah, and nobody there, there knows were that. there were no army, un well, army people in No, the there really was oh, an uh, engineer assigned. Every, all the scripts were, le were legit. I mean, so, no, there was, but it was strange. I think what happened, uh, I wasn't really, had a small part, and I think, in the, but I think Don Devins, was the lead, but he had a, a, a Navy outfit, beige, it worked, but it was in black and white, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> it was an olive, you know, I mean, it was, but that's a great trivia no, question. I I said, that puts every, what, what branch of service you in, that is weird. That, one time, I don't even know this story, we're, I, I think we were in LA, and I ran out of pictures, so I did the picture of the two of us. So, you know, but I've got the olive outfit, and he's got that, so it was supposed to, he said, five minutes, and three hours later, he came back, he said, well, the problem is that somebody made your outfit olive, I had to make it blue. <laughs> so I got this picture of the no, two, okay. we're both in blue, yeah, it's blue, it's hysterical. Now, you, of course, as uh, Tony Nelson, were wearing the blue, and that's your cap, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, got it. There you go. Oh, master. <laughs> <laughs> Just fantastic. That's the hat that you wore? No, no, it's not. It's a replica. Ah. Oh. But it's very, very fetching. You still look very handsome in it. Thank you, sir. What is it about your characters that have been known for hats? <laughs> oh, I don't know. A hat is uh, what shows what you are. If you wear a Western hat, I have those. You're a cowboy or a businessman. And we don't have much hair. That helps. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Math <laughs> works. Least, uh, I only have three hairs. I just arrange them well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a series called My Three Hairs. By the way. Oh, that's, that's, that's very novel. good. Too early for that stuff. Now, Barbara, I just heard a little master creep out. Yes. Um, of course, that was the, the signature way you, you addressed Larry's character. In this day and age, how do you reflect upon calling a man master? Well, if you're a genie, that's what you do. Well, if you're a woman, a regular female human woman, you don't do that. But if you're a genie, of course, master. Did you ever get any flack about that from the women's rights? No, no. I, I really didn't. Uh, I'd get flack from the press. <laughs> you know, they always wanted to know. That's our job. Yeah, 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 of course. We got and the eight scared. And it, it's. You know, it's, it's <clears throat> sort of silly because she wasn't real, number one. She was a genie. That was her job. Yeah. <laughs> and what else would she call him? She had to have a master. But, of course, in the show, uh, she really called the shots. So I don't Absolutely. know why anyone worried about it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> What's in a word? <laughs> it's true. It's that very clever technique of letting a man think he's in charge. Oh, I don't think she even let him think he was in charge. Oh, no. He didn't have a chance. I never thought that. <laughs> now, Larry, you were saying you hadn't been here for 20 years, but Barbara, you came here and actually sang and performed. Yes, I worked at the uh, Silver Spade in the Chevron Hotel. Wow. Uh, I was, at the time, uh, filming Jeannie, and in, in, in our breaks, I was working in Las Vegas. I headlined in Las Vegas in a musical show. So I brought the show to the uh, Silver Spade. And then I also was here uh, for a special that we did at a wildlife sanctuary. And the, I think the fourth time I was in Australia was in Perth with Bob Hope. Bob Hope, wow, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. And Larry, you were telling me in vivid detail what you remember about your visit 20 years ago. <laughs> well, it was my second or third, I think. And, and you loved it? Oh yeah, it sure was not a lot. But it's changed a lot. I mean, there's all these great buildings going up. It's yeah. Amazing. We've grown a bit as a city, and Bill, for some reason, you never wanted to come? Oh, I always wanted to come. Oh, are you kidding? There's a joke there I was never going to get into. <laughs> but no, I, no I, oh, it's a beautiful city. It's lovely, charming, yeah. Thanks, the flight is a dash long. Oh, it's just a chance to have a good nap, I tell you. It's absolutely fine. A fun. good nap, yeah. Now, you're going to meet um, fans, Genie fans, over this weekend at Supernova. What, what do you find? What sort of stories do you find they tell you? Well, I, uh, generally, they ask us for stories. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, they always want to know about my belly button. But that's about it. What about you, Larry? Not the same. They always want to know about belly. your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill? Yeah, the one I don't about my belly button. It's <laughs> all about the belly button. The way it is. We're all human. Yeah, <laughs> and you were saying before that um, when you were pregnant, uh, were you pregnant while you were shooting? The Are you talking to me? No, no I'm not. <laughs> the, first, the first ten shows, yes, I was pregnant. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's why we only did ten in black and white. Oh, okay. And then I came back afterwards and we were in color. Ta-da! Ta-da! Yeah. And that was a miracle. Fantastic. You okay, Mitch? Yeah, yeah good. good. Um, now, after Jeannie, um, three three more shows that were very identified with the three of you, and I'll go right to left, Clemo, so I'll start with Bill. And you, of course, were on the Bob Newhart show, um, which went for quite some years as well, and you had fun on that. No, because I, I love Bob, and he's great, but uh, he didn't like to rehearse. Oh. And, uh, and I'm not that bright, and it was tough, and he's the nicest man in the world, but he's a stand-up comic. It was better for him, and he didn't want to make any mistakes. He wanted to go through the whole show for the audience in there, so he had that pressure. So that was tough. Great writing, but that was tough. Wow. It was a fun genie because we got to rehearse it over and over, and I did what I, well, I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> but it was easier, you know. <laughs> Barbara, of course, Harper Valley PTA, yes. and that was fun. That was a bit of a, a, bit of a change. I love doing it. I like doing, we did a feature film first, and then NBC picked it up and, and did the series. But it was, uh, it was fun playing Stella. Mm. Oh yeah, she drank beer. Oh, <laughs> something Jeannie never yeah, did. No. <laughs> Larry, a little show called Dallas. <laughs> Did you have any idea how big that was going to be? I had no idea. I had no idea. I thought it was going to be about six shows. Uh, we did a pilot that had six shows in it. 
And then it went on, got picked up for seven, then 13, and then 13 years. JR, uh, who shot JR, the still one of the most watched episodes of television ever. How did that play out in your life? The, the cliffhanger, the resolution, the publicity, what impact did it have on you? Well, a long time. We had an actor strike during that period of time, so we didn't really find out until November of the year. Usually it's around September you find out, but this was an extra two months of hype. And it was quite, you know, it was unbelievable. It was worldwide. Worldwide, yeah, yeah. When did you know who shot you? When they showed it on air. <laughs> Really? We shot about eight different endings to it and who did it and so forth. So nobody knew. I suspected, but I never said anything about it. But uh, it was, you know, well, well covered. Did you like playing a nasty character after all those years playing the lovable Tony? Well, I don't know if it was a nasty character. It was a Texas businessman. <laughs> Which I suppose may be a nasty character. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little ruthless. Put it this way, a lot of people had reason to want to shoot you. Oh, lots, yes. Well, it was fun. It was just it was still reverbed. Everybody comes up and asks me, who shot you? And I have to say, Bing Crosby's daughter. <laughs> Bing Crosby's daughter. She was, she was Mary Crosby, and she was playing uh, Sue Ellen's sister, who I was having a little affair with, and she objected to that and shot me. Which, you know, happens. Yeah, it's, all, it's all a reflection. Yeah, once for me. <laughs> it all, it's all a reflection of real life. I, another very pivotal thing, seriously, for a moment that has happened in your life is that you had to have a liver transplant. Yes. And we, at the moment, have a very big campaign going on in Australia to encourage people to be organ donors. Uh -huh. I imagine that's something you're very in favour of. Absolutely. I, I would be not here if I hadn't had a liver transplant. And in America, 18,000 people die every year waiting for one. So we throw them away and bury people with them. One person could save seven lives. And it saved your life? It certainly How did. sick were you? On her birthday, I found out today. 23rd of, of, of August. And she says, that's my birthday. And I said, well, it was my birthday. It's yours, too. <laughs> Isn't that a lovely story? And that yeah, was the day yeah. you got the call? I um, will now. I didn't know it until now. But you got, you got a call saying, come in now. It's all the way it plays out in the, in the television shows. You know, come in now. We've got one and it's ready. It's drama. Uh-huh. And it saved your life. That's incredible, yeah, isn't it? It gave mm. me 16 years more. That's so Why did you need a liver? What had happened? Not at all. I drank it out. It'll happen. And what's the... Do you, is that because of show business? No, because I had a predilection for it. And I didn't think... It, I, I said, I'll quit when the doctors told me. When they told me, it was too late. That was there. <laughs> so I suppose that's, that is a good message. 16 years, that's incredible, guys. Yeah. It wouldn't be the same without having him around, it's would it? It's a miracle. It's a wonderful yeah. miracle. Mm. And um, Barbara, uh, what are some of the main causes you have in your life now? What, what are things that are important to you? Well, I, I speak a great deal about drugs and the effect it has on young people and children and the fact that uh, the, the parents are so completely ignorant of what drugs are, what they do, and how pervasive they are. And parents need to communicate more with their children yes. to try and... Well, yeah, they have to keep a closer eye on their children. You can't... Uh, you know, and it, when I was raised, my privacy was respected by my mother. She'd never go in my drawers or, or, or look in my purse, or, and I, I, I wouldn't do it to her. I don't believe in that anymore. Really? No. I think, uh, I, I, do, I truly don't think children should have that privacy. They can't for their own good anymore. And why is that so important to because you? Because there are drugs around. And you've I seen mean, the damage. It's on the corner. They sell them to children in grammar school. Mm. You know, it's, uh, it's a terrible thing. It's, it's funny because we look back at the days of I Dream of Jeannie and, and you say people didn't have to have this loss of privacy. It just is a time, a more innocent age, isn't it? It's, it brings back memories of a happier, yes. more innocent time, yes. doesn't it? Well, if you had to sum up your, your memories of the I Dream of Jeannie experience and how it fits in. Barbara, if you could go first. It was the happiest time of my life. I had my baby. I was very happily married. I had Larry and Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and it was... Uh, it was wonderful working. I felt very productive. Bill? Well, I didn't have a very good marriage, marriage so I loved all the chicks. <laughs> oh, so that was the best part of the show. <laughs> my, my first girlfriend was Farrah Fawcett. Oh, but that's, she walked in the room. I couldn't talk. Ah, ah, ah. On, the oh, on the show. Oh, on the show. No, no, in real life. Oh, in real life. No, no. Oh. <laughs> 
No, I, on the show, she was my uh, No, I, I swear. Of course, I wish she would might in real life. No, she was beautiful. <laughs> Wasn't she beautiful? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so she good looking. You bet. I swear. She's still good looking. No, she died. But well, yes. she's good looking dead. We'll come out before we get we'll to that. Larry, what are, what are some of your happiest memories from the time of I Dream of Jeannie? Oh, just doing it. It was it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And, and we rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed that show. It was just fun. It was fun. And to think that it's lasted 46 years is kind of bizarre. To me. <laughs> it is, yeah, really. Yeah. And, and it's still, I, I surf the, the web sometimes, and sure enough, there it is, and I'll look and I'll laugh. I'll still laugh, because I've forgotten a lot of the things I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful show. Nowadays, it's many, many more reality shows, less of these scripted, wonderful rehearsed pieces that you know get to show off people's talents. You guys going to do any of those? Are you we going to see any of you guys doing Dancing with the Stars or any of that sort of stuff? Not at my age. No. No. <laughs> I see how hard they have to work. Yeah. <laughs> you said you don't think so? I love this show. I love to watch it. Yeah. But I like to watch the beautiful young girl. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. I didn't know that. No, like when oh, you see a dancer. Oh, yeah. They're, they're over here. Uh, 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 yeah. Bill, sit stay. <laughs> when you see the show, you, you, you enjoy the athleticism and yeah. the skill of these dancers. I don't want to see somebody who can't put the leg up on the shoulder and... I want to do that. <laughs> oh, I reckon you'd. I reckon you'd still be pretty I've good, Barbara. I've never done that. I oh. <laughs> <laughs> I 